What's up everyone? I have another ROM review for you guys. Uh, this one's going to be on Dirty Unicorns. Uh, yes, you heard me correctly. Dirty Unicorns. Uh, this is a feature packed uh, ROM. Lots of visual customization tweaks built inside of this ROM. It's just absolutely fantastic. Uh, a couple of things that I did run into that I want to share with everyone is is uh, the set of GFs that I personally downloaded uh, with the ROM. Um, I ran into all the force closures that you get uh, after login, so I went back in the recovery, reflashed the ROM, flashed a different set of GFs, and didn't have any problems with it after that. Another issue that I ran into was when I went to enable art, I got a very uh, unique uh, warning message. Uh, I will show you that warning message in, in the on screen uh, video after this introduction. Uh, I went ahead and, and, uh, and proceeded, even though it had a warning, and um, on reboot to uh, to optimize for art, it just went to the boot animation and I left it there for about 15-20 minutes and it never moved past that. So I rebooted in the recovery, uh, reflashed the ROM, reflashed G apps, and I just left it on Dalvik and I haven't had any problems with it since after leaving it on Dalvik. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, like I said, a lot of visual customizations. I try to go through those in the on-screen video as fast as possible, so please bear with me. It's a kind of a long video. Uh, it does have pocket mode, which it doesn't work as great as the uh, as the Moto X, but as you can see, it, it, as soon as I pulled it out of my pocket, it lit up. And the reason why I say it doesn't work as great as the Moto X is because this is an LCD display. The Moto X is a AMOLED display, so it works better on the AMOLED device simply because it just eats the battery on an LCD display, uh, leaving uh, pocket mode turned on as well as active notifications turned on in general. But that's an option. You don't have to have it. You don't have to use it if you don't want. So uh, let's go ahead and get into the on-screen um, the on-screen review of Dirty Unicorns 4.4.2 on the uh, Google Nexus 5. Okay, so we're going to get into the on-screen review of Dirty Unicorns 4.4.2. This is specifically for the Google Nexus 5. Um, once you flash it and, and load up, you're going to be, um, greeted with the, with the welcome screen that you would normally see in any typical type of ROM. It's got the Google experience launcher built in. Uh, Google now works. Okay. Google works. Everything else is pretty much the same with that. You can see that the, uh, dash clock widgets is baked into the ROM. That's with the time, uh, the date and, uh, the weather as well as my Gmail. So, um, if you're familiar with dash clock widgets know that it's baked into the ROM. Everything that you can do specific to this ROM is going to be found in the settings menu. Uh, if you go down here to about DU, you can learn about the team as well as what this ROM offers. I think that that's a nice touch uh, and, and it makes it a little bit more personal that you can see the people who are involved with making this. And not only that, uh, if you go over here to their Google Plus community, they are really good at staying active and uh, communicating um, with other members of the team as well as with the developers. Uh, actually, my home screen, the wallpaper here, was actually got, uh, I downloaded that from uh, the Dirty Unicorn uh, Google Plus page. One of the um, users of the ROM made that and uh, shared it with everyone in the community to use. So that's a nice touch. Everything else you should be pretty much familiar with. Everything that you can do specific to this ROM, the majority of it is in Dirty Tweaks. Um, there's a lot in here, so I'm going to try to go through it rather fast um, and give you the rundown as quickly as possible, but there is a whole lot that you can do in here. Uh, status bar, this is where you're going to change your battery icon. As you can see, mine is, um, uh, so, um, as you can see mine is a circle with Scion blue text in it. When I, when I plug it in, it turns green. Um, so you can change that. You can change the clock and date. You can see mine is centered with Scion text. You can change the carrier label. If you uh, go in here to carrier label, if you leave it blank, it's going to default to whatever your uh, network is. As you can see, it says T-Mobile at the bottom. Uh, but if you um, change it and put a text on there, you can have it say pretty much anything that you want. Now it says hello. So you kind of get the gist of that. Uh, notification drawer, this is going to be on your uh, any, any of your notifications. Um, you can change uh, change that. Nothing really special there. Power menu, you can add different things to the power menu when you long press the power button. What's going to show up? This is where you can add those things. Some of the other ROMs have a plus sign on it. You can add a bunch of numerous things. This just gives you this default of five things to choose from. 
animations, uh, you would see more of this in the third party launcher, uh, different type of animations when you change different screens, um, different settings and whatnot. Um, when you're, when you're sliding your finger through different, uh, different pages, it'll have a different animation. So if you have a third party launcher, you can, you're probably more experienced with that. It's uh, similar, but it's baked into the ROM quick settings. Uh, this is where you can change the style of your quick settings, your toggles. As you can see, mine has a cyan blue text. Uh, you can change the text style on that to really anything that you want um, and, and, and get it customized to your, to your liking. You can change the number of tiles per row. And, uh, and uh, you also can t uh, change what it looks like. You can add different things and you can move them around and, and put it to where you like it. That's uh, recent. Um, that's when you hit the recents down at the bottom. Um, you can add. Uh, you can you can add um, the RAM bar at the top. Uh, you can add the clear all. You can see that my clear all is up at the top right. You can change that to whatever you want. You can change the position of the clear all. So right now it's the top right. I can make it the bottom right if I want. And you can see that it moved to the bottom right. And and you can mess around with that. Uh, keep it moving here. Navigation bar, uh, that's going to be at the bottom where your soft keys are. Uh, you can add different uh, type of navigations there. Dimensions, I did change the dimensions. It's defaulted at 48, uh, which is way too big for me. Uh, so I had it at 36. You also can change the bar width. Uh, the the quick launch shortcuts, uh, this is called like trigger rings and some other uh, ROMs. You can change what those are. Um, mine, I have a, a, the flashlight to the left as well as screen off to the right. Uh, you can change and, and assign anything that you want to those. Like I said, that's called triggering in, in some of the other um, ROMs. Active display, this is kind of a take on Moto X's active display. Um, or you can enable it and uh, have different things, um, notifications show on your lock screen. You also have pocket mode, which is where you will pull the phone out of your pocket and it'll automatically light up uh, to a different screen. It doesn't look like your lock screen, but it'll give you a rundown of time, date, and if you have any notifications. You can set it up for notifications only, where it'll only light up if you have a new active notification. Or you can set it up for always, where every time you pull the phone out of your pocket, it'll stay lit for a short duration. And you can change that duration of time here at the bottom where it says display timeout. Now, the thing with the uh, active notification is it works better on AMOLED displays. If you're using this on an LCD display, just keep in mind that your battery is going to go a little bit faster than you would anticipate. And that's going to be because of active display. But it's a nice uh, it's a nice little feature. App bar is something that's pretty cool. Um, what you do is you uh, enable it that, and you can see this blue area on the side, and I can actually change that width, and I can change the position of that as well as the height of that. And what this is going to do is it's going to be the trigger area on where the app bar is activated, and what the app bar is is. Over here, you'll have a list of different apps that you can install in the app bar. Any app that you have downloaded on your phone, you can install in the app bar. As you can see, I have the Apollo Music as well as DP, DSP Manager put in there. You'll drag what you want into that area. And then you're going to hit Save at the top right. It'll say App Bar Items Have Been Saved. When you're in any screen, if you touch that trigger area over on the left-hand side, if you uh, get in that area, yeah, mom. Of course, it doesn't work now. There it goes. You can see that the uh, app, the app display went at the top there. You can see a uh, music, uh, DSP manager, Chrome. Uh, you just have to play with it. I have a fat finger and a case on my phone, so it, uh, making it wider for uh, the trigger area is what helped that. But that's kind of a cool feature. Um, and you can put any app inside of there. Next, Gesture Anywhere. This kind of reminds me of like the old Palm Pilot days um, where you, it's the same thing where you can move the position, move the trigger with. I'll make it wider for my fat finger. But um, you can add the gestures. So what you'll do is you'll go to Add Gesture. 
as you can see, I had data usage set up there as I was playing with it. And I'll delete it and show you how to set it up. So if you go to add gesture, you can add any app that you want. Now, I just added the data usage because I thought that would be something cool for anyone who doesn't have unlimited data that you can quickly check your data usage. But you can use anything that you want. Um, once you put it in there and display it, now it's going to ask you to draw a gesture in that area. I'm just going to draw a check mark. And then it's going to light up the done at the bottom. Once you hit done, that gesture is now saved. If you ever forget what your gesture is, just look to the left of the name and you'll see what the gesture is. So this is anytime you are in any screen and you hit that trigger area, it's going to bring up a translucent black screen and it's going to wait for your input on your gesture. So if you touch that area, you can see the translucent black screen came up. If you hit it by accident, there's an X out at the top right. So once you touch that area and you draw that specific gesture anywhere on the screen, it's going to enter that area that you assign for that gesture. That's one of those uh, things that's pretty cool. And once again, baked into the ROM. Um, keep it going here. Uh, Halo, you guys should be familiar with Halo. Uh, this is a um, cool little notification thing. Uh, you turn Halo on. And um, it's nowhere on here right now, but when you slide down at the top, you'll see a uh, message with a little circle around it. That's to activate Halo. Once you touch that, Halo is, is now active, and it'll go wherever you put it. You can spend a lot of time messing around with Halo. I'm not going to get into it right now, but there's a lot of cool things that you can do with Halo. So just keep in mind that it is baked inside of this ROM. Uh, let's keep it going. Uh, build prop mods and there, uh, and turn, uh, do, 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 nothing uh, really major in here. You can add a little bit of different things. You can add some traffic indicators, as you can see at the top right. I don't know if you were seeing, but next to my LTE symbol, it was flashing some numbers. That's my uh, network speed, download and upload speed. You can change that. Uh, dirty UI is the uh, kind of the dark uh, UI tweak that you see on a lot of ROMs like Slim ROM and some other ROMs use it. Sound, um, only thing that you can do in here different than you, that you would do in other ROMs is, or even the stock ROM, I don't think the stock ROM has it, is you can set up quiet hours on hours on when uh, the device will not go off. Display, you can change your notification lights. You can assign different things uh, for the LED notification. So you don't have to use a third-party app like Lightflow to do this. It's baked in. Um, I utilize it. It's nice to have. Uh, buttons, you can assign different buttons. I have the volume wake button up here as well as you can assign different defaults for the volume. Partition info gives you a breakdown on all your different system partitions and stat, um, storage available. Um, I think we did display. Let's keep it going. App Ops is built in. I love when App Ops is built into the ROM. Um, if you're not familiar with App Ops, this is one of those things that's great for, for apps that require too many permissions. Facebook would be the best example. Facebook asks for so many permissions, it's not even funny, and it doesn't need any of them to function. Well, I shouldn't say any of them, but it doesn't need half of the ones that they're using to function. So if you have an app like Facebook, you can come in here. Now, I don't have Facebook on this uh, installed right now. Um, but if you go to any ICE, um, app and that's installed on the device or it has categories that tells you what specific apps are asking for. And then you can go in there and you can turn those off. Um, keep in mind that if you turn off the wrong thing, it may not the app may not work properly. Uh, just keep that in mind. Um, but App Ops is very nice to have. I love it when it's baked in. You also have Super User installed, and you also have another thing called Performance. And this is really cool, where you can actually tweak the kernel. And uh, as you can see, mine's is set up to on demand right now, and you can change that to power save, uh, uh, conservative uh, performance, and different other things that you can mess around with that. Um, default, it's going to look like this. And you can change the um, the, the, the speeds uh, uh, of the CPU. Uh, it's going to look like this default, but if you go to the advanced and switch tab, it's going to give you the breakdown like this. And you can scroll through and check out uh, other things and other statistics uh, about the battery and about your CPU and other things. It's a really nice uh, touch that's baked into the ROM. Um, it's pretty much really 
uh, everything, not everything, but that's pretty much most of the stuff that you can do in here. You can spend a lot of time uh, messing around with this stuff. Uh, like I was saying, I'm trying to go fast and make this um, as quick as possible. But uh, this is going to be Dirty Unicorns 4.4.2. Uh, so if you're looking for a ROM that has a lot of customization built into it, uh, this is going to be it. One thing I want to show you real fast is I am not running art. Art did not run successfully for me. This is what you get when you hit art. Art is not supported by DU. This setting is included for experimentation only and has the potential to cause instability, crashes, data loss, a nuclear holocaust, and your cat may catch on fire. So uh, when I tried to switch to art, it uh, it did not load, and I had to reboot into recovery and uh, flash everything over again. So just keep that in mind that art is not supported on this ROM. Um, but uh, that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully this video helps you guys out if you're thinking about uh, trying Dirty Unicorns. Uh, hopefully this pushes you over the edge, but this is a really cool ROM. Um, I have nothing to do with the team. Um, I just appreciate the work that they put into this ROM. Um, so please uh, hit them up on their Google Plus community. Um, donations, anything. All the information can be located at the bottom of this video. All the links to everything that I use will be at the bottom of the video. So uh, have fun, guys.